Hey guys, I'm Georgia Bruce and today I'm going to be showing you how to safely introduce your horse to clicker training, hand feeding and positive reinforcement. So this is Saffron, she's a four year old mare and I'm going to be using her to demonstrate. The first thing we want to do is set up our environment to make things easiest for the horse to concentrate on us and to not have to compete with other horses for food. Before we start clicker training our horse and training with food rewards, we first want to make sure that our horse isn't hungry because a hungry horse might get anxious or overly excited about the food rewards. It helps to make sure that your horse will have access to some food throughout the training session. So I'm going to put some hay in Safi's stall. So another way we can help our horse be relaxed about training with food rewards is to just first give the horse a very small feed so that they're not hungry when we're training. Even if your horse has been out on the grass or that they've had some hay, it can be a good idea with some horses that are really excited by food to first of all really make sure they're not hungry by giving them a small feed as well as the hay. For your very first clicker training session with your horse, it's a good idea to start with protected contact with a barrier between you and the horse. The barrier limits the horse's ability to perform behaviours that might be dangerous, like pushing on you to try and get the food. And this helps us to be able to focus on building behaviour that we do want. This pony Safi does have some issues with aggressive behaviour and resource guarding around the food, so I definitely want to work with a barrier between us. If your horse is a bit grabby or they're likely to be dangerous about taking the food out of your hand, you can introduce the marker signal and the positive reinforcement using a fence feeder, so a bucket that clips onto the fence. And we can just mark and then drop our reinforcer into the bucket. The first thing we want to do is pair the sound of the click, the marker signal, with the food rewards. So can just click and then drop some food in the bucket. Repeat this a few times until the horse starts to look for the food when they hear the sound of the click. Now you can start to use the clicker to mark a behaviour. Wait for the horse to move away from you and when they do, click and drop some food in the bucket. When the horse finishes eating, click while they're still standing there before they come back to you and then drop some food in their feed bucket. With lots of repetition, you can gradually increase the time that the horse will stand still and wait for the click and the reward. When people think about giving a horse a food reward, they often think of carrots because everyone's learned that horses love carrots. And horses are often really highly motivated by carrots. Sometimes that can be a bit too much enthusiasm for what we want when we're just starting with clicker training. We want the horse to learn to be nice and calm when we're training with food and not to get overexcited. So one thing that we can do to help the horse to be calm with the food rewards is to choose what type of food rewards we use. Something like carrots might be too high value if your horse is super food motivated and really excited around food. Um, I tend to use the lowest value food that my horse will still work for. So something like I've got some chaff here, um, the horse is going to be calmer about eating chaff than they would be about getting really high value carrots or even grain. You can even use um, handfuls of hay and just have a, a big bag instead of a small treat pouch. You can have a big bag with some hay in it and grab handfuls of hay. Something else we can do if our horse is likely to bite you while you're giving a food reward is to use a small feed pan. Any kind of a, a bucket or a pan or a tray even can be a good way to give the food rewards so that you don't get your hand bitten while you're introducing the concept of the marker signal. This is a clicker and it marks the moment of behavior that I want to reward. There's lots of different types of clickers. Some people use a verbal click or a, or a, or a yes or 
The most important thing is that the sound is consistent and it's the same every single time. So I recommend that people start with one of these box clickers and get used to it. And then once your horse understands the marker signal, you can always switch over to a different type of marker signal later. So using a low value reinforcer, the chaff will help her to be a bit calmer about the food. And also using this feed pan means that she won't bite my hand. I lured her so that she was standing parallel to the fence next to me and she sniffs at the food. Eventually she'll move her head away from me. When she does I'll click and mark that moment and then I will use the food tray to give her some food. So I would work on this behaviour on both sides of the horse and once she's going well with keeping her head away from me with the full protective contact with a high gate. I'm then going to use a lower gate, so partial protective contact, so that she can still reach her head over the gate. Um, and I'm also going to switch to using a bum bag and feeding by hand. So the horse is going to want to get into the bag and try to get to the food. So one of the first things that we can do to make things easier for the horse is to move the bag around to the side away from where they are and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn my back towards her a little bit and then when she moves her head away from me then I'm going to click So when you're going to feed the horse, it's good to think about feeding the horse all the way away from your body, so at arm's length away from you, rather than in here near the bag. So we never want to feed the horse anywhere near our body or near the bag. We always want to feed the horse um, all the way away from us. When you're feeding, try to feed with your fingers close together, not with your fingers apart and not with your fingers scrunched up. So I don't want her neck all the way around there where she can't see me and I don't want her neck all the way around here. Just having her neck straight and still in the middle of her chest is just great. If she stays there I'm going to click again. If she turns towards me I'll just turn my back towards her. When she moves away with her neck straight I'll click. So some horses when they're taking the treats from your hand they might nibble and then they might bite and use their teeth and if you find that the horse is using their teeth instead of their lips to take the treats out of your hand then you could go back to using the feed pan and there's also a couple of other things that you can do to help the horse learn to take the food with their lips rather than their teeth and one thing is just to be aware about which hand you're using to give the food rewards. So give the food with the hand that's away from the horse. So we go over the front of the horse's nose like that, rather than feeding them from under their chin. If you feed the horse from under their chin, then they're more likely to grab and nibble or, or accidentally bite your hand. So it's better if we feed over the front of the nose like that. So another option that you can do if your horse is using their teeth is to give a bigger handful. So I'm going to click when she's still with her neck straight and then give a big handful and take my hand away before she's got all of the every last little pellets off my hand. So she doesn't need to stand there and nibble every last little pellet off my hand. If she's accidentally biting me then I'll definitely use a much bigger handful and I'll make sure that she gets you know a decent amount in her mouth and then I'll just take my hand away so that she doesn't have um, the ability to get so close to my skin because there's such a big handful of food in there. So a good way to solve the problem of the horse using their teeth is to just push your hand a little bit gently upwards as they're eating. You can see she really strongly wanted to push down on my hand and take the food with her teeth. So I'll click when she's holding still there with her neck straight and then I'm just gently going to 
lift my hand up towards her as she's eating or as she's taking the food. So again, I'm just going to gently move my hand up towards her as I give that food reward. So if your horse is accidentally using their teeth as they try to take the food out of your hand, there's another method you can use which Peggy Hogan came up with. And that one is where we click and then we present the horse with the back of our hand and then we wait for them to just move their nose a little bit away from our hand and then we flip our hand over. So you can just experiment and see what works for you and your horse. Whichever method you use, you'll need to be consistent and do lots of repetition. I'll also increase my rate of reinforcement and that means how often are you clicking? So how many times per minute do you click? And how often is the horse successful in a minute? So if your rate of reinforcement is really low and you're not clicking very often, then the horse might start moving around and sniffing on you and pushing you and then turning their head away and then sniffing on you. And that can teach the horse to actually move around rather than teaching the horse just to stand still and relax. So if you find that your horse is really moving around a lot and they're turning away and they're coming back to the food and they're turning away and coming back to the food, there's a couple of things that you can do. The first thing I would do is give a bigger handful so that the horse is still chewing and then you can increase your rate of reinforcement so that every time they are holding still, you click again. And that way they haven't got so much opportunity to move their head around in between each repetition. And they're also very busy chewing, so that helps to keep them nice and calm. We can then occasionally space out the clicks a little bit. Not every time. You can see how she's staying much more still now. There's not so much turning her head left and right and instead we're just clicking for staying in the middle. So using that bigger handful initially and then increasing the rate of reinforcement and then we can start to occasionally put a little bit of a pause between each click and just gradually build the duration for how long she can stand with her neck straight before we click. We don't get longer and longer every time. We, we sort of sometimes do a longer one and then do an easy one. So we make it a little bit more variable. So it's not just always harder and harder every single time, but gradually we can increase the duration. So that time when she heard the click, she came over towards me and I just waited for her to be in position before I give the food reward. So I click for the behavior and then I feed her when she's in the position where I want her to be. So click for behavior, feed for position. I wanna click when she's got her neck straight and her head away from me. And I also wanna feed her with her neck straight and her head away from me. So once we go to the other side, just make sure that we put our bum bag around to this side. And their head away from the food. And just remembering that we wanna feed over the front of the horse's nose, so that way, rather than underneath the chin. So if your horse is moving all around the place, turning their head away and coming back and sniffing you and turning their head away and coming back, when the horse holds still just for a moment, give a bigger handful and then while the horse is still chewing, you can click again and they'll still be there. And that way 
we can get some more repetitions in with the horse holding their nose straight. If she goes all the way over there, I'm not going to click because she won't be able to see my cues if I'm asking her to do something there, just with her neck straight. So when she has her neck straight, I'll get as many click and rewards in as I can. And that way she'll start to think this is a really good place to be. If I just stand with my neck straight, I get lots of clicks and rewards. Great. So ideally we're aiming towards first of all just teaching the horse to have their neck straight and then waiting and then eventually we can wait for the horse to also have their nose still. And if you're waiting and there, if you're waiting and waiting and you find the horse is really busy and they're a little bit unsure how to get the food and they're moving everywhere, then it helps to just take a deep breath yourself breathe and be present and just wait for the horse to find there some stillness some calmness and then gradually just increasing that duration so there when she's searching I'm just going to breathe there when she's nice and still that's when I click if she pushes on me and she hears the click again I'll just wait for her head to be away from me before I give the food initially keep the sessions quite short about five minutes on each side is enough and when you're giving the horse a rest, walk well away from them so that they're not standing there with their head straight being polite and not getting rewarded. So this was another session and you can see how Safi is starting to get more duration and able to hold her neck straight and still for longer before I click. Make sure that every session you start from the beginning and you reshape the behaviour. It won't take as long each time, the horse will more quickly get up to where you finished off in the last session. But that way the horse won't get frustrated and you'll make sure that those first steps are really solid. Try to raise your criteria in small enough stages that the horse can continue to be successful. And if you find that the behaviour does deteriorate, just go back to whatever stage the horse was successful and then try to build up more gradually next time. So once our horse is getting better at just being able to stand still and they can stand with their neck straight for a little bit longer before we click, we can then start to just touch the horse with our hands still and if the horse keeps its neck straight we can click and give them a reward. It depends on the horse as to where they're comfortable being touched at first. With some horses it's more on the shoulder, with other horses it's more at the base of the neck. And if the horse wants to move away, that's fine. Um, and 
if the horse does stand there and I am able to touch their body with my hand when their neck is straight I will click take my hand away and then give them the reward if your horse was really scared about being touched then you would definitely do the targeting first but if your horse is more used to people and being handled then you can um, go straight on to this game which I call the statue game um, after working on the food manners. I will work on targeting at a later stage with this little horse. I just wanted to get some food manners and some statue game established with her before I started the targeting. So it can be a good idea initially to use an end of session cue so that the horse knows that the opportunity for reinforcement is over when the training session finishes. And the best way to do that is just say finished and then drop a big handful of food in a bucket and then you can walk away.